Ho ho! Are you approaching us? Welcome to another episode of the Fear Missing Out Podcast, a show where we talk to superfans about popular and niche things and ask them what they like about them and where you, the newcomer, can get started. This week's episode must have been the work of the enemy stand user, because we're going to dive into the bizarre world of Hirohiko Araki's JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. Tokyo, Tomare. All right, lovely guests. Would you care to introduce yourself? Yeah, um, my name is Terrain Walker. Most of my friends call me TJ, or most people who just know me call me TJ. Uh, I'm a photographer and just general artist living in Chicago right now. And uh, I like JoJo's a lot. So I guess that's why I'm on here. All right, All right yeah, this is the perfect time to, to be on here, actually, since we're going to be talking about some JoJo's. So <laughs> um, for everyone who's like not aware, I'll do like a cursory, here's your, your quick kind of history lesson run through. JoJo's Bizarre Adventure is uh, currently an ongoing manga and anime series uh, by Hirohiko Araki. It started in um, 1987. Uh, is when the first manga came out and it's still going now like it he's he's on he's one of those uh, manga co where like he kind of just updates he's he's got enough tenure to update whenever he kind of feels like it but yeah so it's one of those ones but uh tj for the uninitiated can you sum up in your in your best words um what jojo's bizarre adventure is in a nutshell you know how hard that is it's a pretty daunting task <laughs> <laughs> but if you could for someone who knows nothing about it what what is right. uh, jojo's about i would say jojo's is about if i had to give a general like description of what it's about i would say it's like a a, a multi-generational story following this one family called the joe star family and just like all the weird that happens to them over uh multiple like what is it like generations of their family yeah i said generational that's that's the best way i can give a general description of it all right i would say you nailed it i'd say that is exactly what it would be about in in a layman's terms but um for everyone when they get into jojo's they always have different introductory points to it um whether it's through like the innocuous memes that just flood the internet everything is a jojo's reference because technically everything is a jojo's reference even breathing is a jojo's reference if you really think about it get really granular about it but um when it comes to watching the show proper um tj what was your introduction to uh, jojo's bizarre adventure i i probably say because like i think i got into it around the time that like part four had just like came out like finished coming out uh i mean maybe it was a year after it finished coming out and um, just like I just saw a lot of like memes and just random stuff about it on uh, like anime Instagram and anime Twitter and stuff like that. Uh, I just had multiple friends like talk about it. There was one friend who was real adamant about it, but he was really bad because he would like spoil stuff, which is not what you should do. But then I had another friend who was real nice mm-hmm. about it. So I actually decided to watch it. And I think I like I was watching it over the course of like a year like the first four parts it took me like a year and part five just so happened to start coming out the day after i finished part four mm. so then i was like caught up right on time and then i i, I read all the part five manga like two episodes into part five so that's nice. how that went <laughs> Like, I'd say for me, mine would also start, like, I didn't really, like, I was aware of, like, the memes around, like, I knew what, like, kind of vaguely what stands were, because I just kind of heard it enough times to, like, kind of get what it was about, like, it's, it's a ghost that has powers and stuff, um, I think when I started college, my roommate had part four on, and I was like, oh, okay, this is a, this is a Jojo, that Jojo in that part would be a Josuke Higashikata, and uh, Joe Toro was also in that one. He's a part three Jojo. It'll, it'll all make sense later, guys, I promise. Uh, I'll run through it quickly <laughs> to say who are the people in the each parts. But um, they were just kind of doing their thing. I was like, okay, this is what Jojo is about. And um, I, I started reading, like, I started watching it, uh, the kind of like the newer version of it, not the OVA. And then I got so far caught up that I was like, I'm also going to start reading it. And I am, um, TJ, uh, to start with you, where are you at when it comes to reading it? Uh, what part are you on right now? Oh, I'm on part eight, man. Oh, you're on part eight too. All right, cool, cool, cool. Bet. I haven't so, yeah. really read much um, of it though, just because like, it doesn't seem like there's an end in sight, so I, I'm waiting. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm tentatively like, I think I'm like about 
30 chapters into part eight and I was like, I'm just going to wait until yeah. there's more. So I won't you know, like, play myself like I've done with Berserk or what I've done with Hunter Hunter. And I'm like, oh, okay. Um, so uh, to go more into the parts and things like that, um, let's let's quickly take a step back. Let's um, hit hit the world stand here for a second, and then also hit it with um, King Crimson. Just go back a little bit to talk about um, what the different parts are and like why those things and those people kind of matter in those parts. So uh, TJ, would you mind uh, running us down? What what's the part? What's the name of the part? And what's the JoJo in that part? All right. So uh, part one. Damn. What's the name of part one? <laughs> Uh, I believe it is Phantom Blood. Right, right. I've got Phantom that one on lock. Yeah, there Phantom Blood. Phantom Blood. That's our. That's uh, Jonathan is our JoJo on that one. He's the very first JoJo. Mm-hmm. Or, well, he's not the very first JoJo, but he's the very first like what we know a JoJo to be JoJo. Um, and it's it takes place in the 1800s England or 1900s somewhere England. somewhere back in those old yeah, days. A yeah, long time ago. <laughs> And uh, do you want me to like give a summary of the part, or just like, um, if you want me to quickly give one, um, and then we could just sort of move on, uh, because I know that it could get like really, really deep into whichever you one you're more comfortable with. We can switch off. Okay, okay cool. Uh, do you want to do part one, and then I'll do part two, and we'll just do back and forth. Uh, yeah, sure. My summary is gonna be real whack. I'm not gonna lie. Although I just oh, watched it again like, <laughs> two months ago, but whatever. Um, <laughs> summary of part one. Basically, it's just like you get introduced to Jonathan and how like Dio comes in the picture, who is kind of the overarching villain, of like all of Jojo's in a way, not all of it, but for a lot of it. And uh, that's pretty much just like their first showdown and how like this, like, um, like the character of a Jojo becomes comes to fruition. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And I don't really want to like get too spoilery yeah well we'll we'll give a very brief overview so um part two um you hit the fast forward button on the lineage a bit we have a new jojo as the protagonist and his name is joseph joestar one of my one of my favorites he's kind of a lock there because he's he's got a lot of personality he's way different than him his grandfather and Jonathan Joestar. This takes place, I believe. It, it's mostly is it mostly in the in the U.S. They, during, they travel a lot in this part. Yeah, it's during like uh, World War One or two. I think World it's the it's the eaves of World War Two because yeah. there's some parts of it that they really kind of dive into some of the the military depictions of a certain country during <laughs> yeah. that time. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that one um, they're doing some stuff there. It's kind of um, an immediate follow up to the stuff that happens in part one. Um, they have their magic system that's there called Hamon. I'll just kind of mention that briefly because it'll yeah, only it matter it. until this point and then it'll stop mattering ever again. Uh, it's kind of like a breathing technique because again, like I said breathing it's a jojo's reference uh that allows them to uh have this uh, kind of like mastery over their body to like be able to do all these superhero kind of feats so um in this part um joseph is like facing off against like some crazy stuff like i think is it is part one they deal with vampires we're not we're not going to talk about it <laughs> part two they're dealing with these things called pillar men which are the basically like these uh, aztec kind of gods <laughs> super vampires they're even better than the vampires so that's that's a brief kind of thing for part two uh what's part three about uh part three you get introduced to to stands and you get introduced to probably the most iconic jojo which is uh jodoro like if you've seen a random like clip or art of jojo just like someone talking about it you, you've probably seen jotaro and um it's just about like basically <laughs> his mom gets cursed or whatever and uh it's dio dio's back so they gotta go search for dio so they go on a very long trip all across like like is it just they try to get to egypt it starts in yeah japan they're mostly it, messing around in cairo yeah. yeah it starts in japan and ends up in egypt uh mm-hmm and it's just like a really good journey that's that's pretty much what part three is yeah and so uh while jotaro is like the grandchild um of joseph joestar or is he the grand? yeah he's the grandchild of joseph joestar in part two skip forward again we're in part four now um 
So part four is Jose, Josuke Higashikata. He is the next JoJo protagonist. He is the son of uh, Joseph Joestar from part two. Um, Legitimate. He's not the most loyal dad. Mm. He is illegitimate. <laughs> uh, there's a there's a branch in the family tree done by um, our good old favorite protagonist, uh, Joseph. So this one is, um, out of all those ones in the previous part, so this one, like, the first one's kind of like a weird, like, um, vampire kind of mystery. The second one's a little bit uh, like an Indiana Jones type of dealio. Um, the third one, it's just, it's a whole Odyssey kind yeah. of thing. It's just, it's a mix of a lot of different movie genres, I'd say. Yeah. This one, I would say, would be, I would describe it as the Twin Peaks kind of a season. Yeah, it's a mystery. Uh, you mostly... S- yeah, it's a mystery. It's a murder mystery, actually. Uh, so you stay in this uh, town called Morio. Uh, there's this uh, serial killer guy on the loose, and it's one of the many people that um, Araki was inspired by David Bowie with, like, his villains. So um, there's just a bunch of high school kids doing some crazy, crazy stuff, figuring out stand stuff and all that, doing different hijinks. Um, there's an alien, probably. Maybe. Not really confirmed, but kind of loosely confirmed in that part. Uh, but yeah, they deal with uh, trying to stop this um, serial killer called... Um, Oh, man. Kira Yoshikage. So that's kind of the plot of that one. Yeah. Uh, let's head over to part five. My least favorite part, but it needs oh, a synopsis all the same. What? I don't like part five very that's much. It took me a lot part. to get through that one. That's crazy. Oh, uh, <laughs> uh, what was that? Dang, you just threw me off the rails. I'm sorry. Uh, I, had to, I had to mention that in there. <laughs> uh, I was going to say uh, part four is also where you kind of get like what looks to be the formula that it just starts to grab onto. You know what I'm saying? So for like for the first mm. half of it, they don't really have their main villain. It's kind of just like fight, fight, <laughs> fight. You get like mm-hmm. you get like the tier stand two. of the week kind of a thing. Yeah, yeah. you get like the tier two main villain, but then you get introduced to the main villain, and then like the second half of it is focused on them. Uh, and it's also mm. like when it starts doing. It seems like every season is going to be thirty nine episodes now from here on out. Is what mm. I'm thinking. But I thought I just should quickly mention that. Part five, mm-hmm. my favorite part, uh, mm-hmm. takes place in Italy. And um, the main JoJo of this one is uh, Giorno Giovanna, who is... <clears throat> how, how can I make... <laughs> I'm going to describe this. It's also an interesting part of the family tree. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so basically... <laughs> for, for- yeah, I, mean, I feel like I kind of have to get spoilery with this one. We, we, we'll dive into it a little bit. From this point, we're going to kind of loosely go into spoilers. It's going to yeah. be very hard not to talk about them, especially for the next two parts after this one. Yeah, so pretty much Giorno is Dio's son, but he's also Jonathan's son because Dio puts his head on Jonathan's body and then just starts just That's, having yep. kids. And Giorno is... This is how anatomy it's, works. Technically, it's... <laughs> Technically, it's both of their sons. So technically, he's like, he's um, he's Jonathan. Technically, he's Joseph's. Like, what? What is he? Oh, Jonathan. He's ah uh, ah man. There's a whole flow chart of like a thing in my head. They might be like, I don't know. They might be brothers like, and like uncle brothers. and somehow. I think they might be uncle like and uncle nephew somehow. Like that. Yeah. I yeah. think I think Jotaro is his nephew technically. Technically mm. wait, no 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 no. Jotaro is technically Josuke's nephew, I think. Which is weird. It's it's all the family tree is insane. It's yeah, part yeah, of the, it's <laughs> reason to get invested. But anyway, yeah. it takes place in Italy. Giorno's your Jojo. He's very he's modeled after Dio, um, in a way. And uh basically it's like a mobster story, pretty much. Mm. It's also a little bit of a mystery too, to be honest. But I think it's mainly mm. like a, a gangster kind of thing going on in a, in the weird JoJo mm. way. And uh, that's pretty much yeah. Jorno's basically just trying to take over this gang, pretty much, and that's kind of yeah, yeah, the entry point to that part, I'd say. Mm. And my favorite part, the part that I suffered through part five, just to get to part six. Suffered this through. part. Oh. <laughs> I it took me a minute. I it took me like I think three whole years to get through that part, and it did not need to take that long to get through it. But it took me that long to get through it. Part six, um, is part a six. For my favorite, to be honest. Part yeah, I'd say um, part six uh, stars Jolene Cujo, the daughter of Jotaro Cujo, and um, she's in prison. 
And uh, it's pretty much a jailbreak um, to get out of prison with her and her friends. And then they um, they go on this adventure of their own where they uh, have to stop this um, priest. Who I'd say is he's probably one of the top three strongest Jojo villains uh, in the whole thing. Um, <laughs> Enrico Pucci. Yeah. What were you gonna say? He's a priest who was a big. He's a priest that was a big, uh, big fan of Dio's. Like they were, they were so so close to friends. They would uh, cuddle up in bed and just yeah, read they're, books they're and talk friends. about life. Yeah, yeah. And no, then no, they're straight up friends. Let's just drop all pretenses here. So yeah, um, things happen in part six <laughs> um, that lead to part seven. And by now we've kind of reached like the um, kind of an Avengers kind of like an end game kind of a thing that happens in part six. I won't go into what happens specifically, but it leads to stuff that happens in part seven, which kind of kind of does a way to like reset the stage for the universe of uh, Jojo. Yeah. And uh, you want me to go to part seven now? I mean, we, we can, we can, it's not the, at the point right now of us recording, like part six hasn't been animated as far as we know. Uh, and part sure. seven hasn't been a thing. So this is just all manga only kind of a thing. So I guess uh, we can, if you, if you want to, people need to read, they need to get their reading on man. It's been out for so mm, long. Yeah. Read the manga. <laughs> yes. <Yeah, it's, laughs> there's uh, no excuse. I'll, I'll just make a quick thing. Part seven is like, it's, it's a race. They're cowboys. Um, you kind of get some revamping of the way stands work and the way the universe works and it's really cool and it is often regarded as like the best part it is i think on my anime list like maybe number one or number two highest rated manga like ever which i don't know Mm. if that's because of the amount of people who read it or if it's actually that good i won't say but that's what it is (laughs) Mm. like it's kind of like again not to compare it to Marvel but I can I can't help but compare it to Marvel like it's kind of unfair to make it the best thing because it's like yeah. comparing like an Avengers film to like maybe like another like standalone film where it's like well this is kind of like a celebration of all of JoJo so it's like yeah. gonna have all the best parts of it thrown in together so uh, in this part we are followed by uh, Johnny Joestar yeah he's our uh, main character sort of kind of um, and then there's this uh, his mentor uh, Euro Zeppeli uh, instead of Hamon as the magic power, they got the oh, ripple. Euro? It's just Gyro. rotation. Gyro, Euro. Uh, I, I, see, I see the G-Y-R-O. It's Gyro, it's gyro Zeppeli. Okay, fine. <laughs> we'll, we'll wait until it's animated and get a, get a consistent on this one. <laughs> but um, this one's really fun. I like this part a lot. I, I would say this one is probably one of my... It's probably my favorite one, actually. Technically, there's an asterisk there, just again, because it's kind of the the Avengers like kind of version of the whole JoJo's where it's like, I don't know. It's, it's hard to say that this is the favorite, but it's, it's a big standout one there. Um, the villain of this one is, um, oh man, I funny Valentine. He is the president of the United States and he's really cool and his power is really broken, but you know, he cares about the country and he, his power involves the American flag appearing on his back and it's really fun. Um, part eight, I don't know what's going on in part eight. <laughs> from where know. I'm at, I don't know. Either, it's hard man. to talk about part eight, but we'll just leave it off at there. That will be the mystery. I like we get to part eight and join us. Confusing to be. <laughs> we can't. We. Can't. Yeah. I was nervous to even say the name of the one in this part, but uh, from here, I think this is a good jumping out point to um, maybe uh, talk about our own stuff personally with it. Uh, so. TJ, uh, what do you like about JoJo? There's a lot of things that are involved with JoJo. There's a lot of crazy stuff that happens in it, but what's the thing that uh, you like the most about it? What thing, what's the thing I like the most about it? Mm-hmm. Oh, that's hard because like, there's a lot of things I like about it. <laughs> um, the most, though, like the absolute most. I'd say like the most, like the thing that like compared to other shonen anime that I like about it is just like it's pretty different and it's weird that it's different because it was technically written so long ago and it's just like I feel like they remove a lot of the issues with shonen and like power creep and all that stuff that I don't like with having it be a new main character like every part of it and it's just like a different new story every part and that's like kind of what keeps me like coming back to it. Just so I hope there's another part after part eight, to be honest. Um, mm. It's just like something, it's really refreshing to me compared to like other shonen anime. 
that are mm-hmm. just just shonen anime in general. Like, there's other good shonen anime that I like a lot, but it's just like it's not JoJo's, you know. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, and I guess to dive a little bit more into that, like the thing that um, TJ is kind of hinting at is that like usually in the shonen anime, like there's like the Goku thing, or like they get really powerful, they beat, they defeat the bad guy, but then there's another bad guy who happens to just show up and happens to be more powerful than the last bad guy. So like you just sort of have like these this escalator of like you got to get more powerful, you got to get more powerful, you got to get more powerful. JoJo's kind of like deals with that issue by not really dealing with like how powerful you need to be to get more powerful for the next thing. Each person has their own specific kind of power. And they have to use that power to like win in these really weird, bizarre situations for their battles. Um, so I guess this could we are jumping in point to kind of introduce like what, what stand powers kind of are. Um, so stand powers, um, they they manifest as like a, a, I describe it as like a spiritual ghost kind of manifestation that uh, comes with you. Uh, they they're called stands because they stand by your side. Um, they have spe- different specific powers. Sometimes, sometimes they do. Sometimes they're just acting on their own. Yeah. Um, so they're like uh, ghosts that kind of have like these specific powers. Some can stop time. Some can punch really good. Some can um, open you up like a book and then write things into you and change your whole way of being. <laughs> um, they have a lot of different random powers. They do a lot of different random things. And the fun part about JoJo's there is that like each situation is like it's just a random scenario. Like this one power that can seem like really mixed match will face this other power that can seem really like basic. But then the protagonist usually has kind of the basic or power, and they have to find a way to like use their power to like play like two D chess <laughs> to get themselves like out of the situation and come out the victor. That's a pretty good. That's a pretty good description of stance. Yeah, I'd say so. Um, so here's where. <laughs> oh, go ahead. I was just gonna say I think like stands are another reason why it's so good. It's because they offer so much to fights that is like makes it more than just like punching. You know, like as a mm-hmm. power system, they just like make everything more interesting, which is what I want. You know. Hmm. And to go a little bit more into stands, another reason why, and this is going to go into my reason why I like JoJo's, besides everyone doing, like, these, like, Vogue model-esque poses anytime they do anything in any panel or any, like, shot of the anime, um, the stands and, like, the characters even are, like, named after musical references. Araki is a big music nerd who, like, throw into, like, there's, like, um, Notorious B.I.G. is the name of a stand. There's Red Hot Chili Peppers. Um, there's just like stands for everything and they usually have a musical reference and usually their power has something to do with that musical reference so uh jumping into uh this uh, part of the show i wanted to do like a quick kind of like um rapid fire kind of like questionnaire kind of a thing so um tj what is your favorite stand power and why my favorite stand power or stand mm-hmm. oh stand i guess stand go into that if you want to my favorite stand is easily killer queen um, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. it's like Killer Queen is just crazy. <laughs> um, <laughs> I also really like um, what's the stand called? Like close seconds and thirds are um, dang, what is it called? Oh my god, what's Charlene stand called? Um, oh man, oh god, I'm forgetting what the name of the stand is. <laughs> um, oh, uh, oh, no, uh Stone there Free. Uh, stone stone free. Free. whatever it's mm. it's both i don't know. um okay yeah, stone <laughs> free and uh and, and golden experience definitely both of them are close mm. seconds but uh killer queen is just like everything from like the design and just like the or like it has the perfect introduction for a stand like i don't think there's really any other stand that's been introduced as well as that maybe dio stand um mm. but just like turning anything into a bomb is pretty generically cool, but I think it's mm-hmm. the way that he goes about it. And then the secondary powers of killer queen that are so cool. Um, and how like bites the dust and, um, little tank dude forgot what his name was, but they just make it so uh, he doesn't sh- become that one. They make it so he doesn't become too one note, which I also like. And then mm-hmm. the design is just like pretty godlike in my opinion. Hmm. Um, I'd say my favorite stand. We're also uh, gonna. I guess we're gonna stick in the realm of part four. Um, my favorite stand is uh, actually um, Heaven's Door. 
Uh, this is uh, Rohan uh, Kishibe's stand. He's like, the funny thing is that Rohan's a character that's also a mangaka, also creates manga. And um, Araki would be like, no, this is my favorite character. I totally didn't draw a picture of me and this um, character of like basically hugging each other. No, this isn't my favorite character at all. Um, the cool thing about this stand is that um, this, I kind of alluded to it earlier. Um, when he activates the stand, it can like write into a person, like uncovers them, like a person's like body power will unfurl like a book. He can peer into the uh, pages of you, see some secrets and see some information by reading through it. But he can also write in there, maybe something look be like, hey, maybe you just like can't say the letter five or something like that. So um, <laughs> he can just write some crazy stuff in there and then like put it in. And then that'll just be like the way you operate. Um, he's a popular enough character where I think he has his own spinoff that like just got announced on Netflix. There was like a panel of it that I saw at one point. Yeah, like, he, I'm not sure if he's actually meant to involved with someone. Spin-off. He the second spin. Like, see, he's yeah. totally not Araki's favorite at all. No, nothing at all. Um, but like, there's like this one panel moment of it that like kind of confirmed me. Like, this is really it hit, it hit me in the feels a little bit. Like, where he could have peeked into like seeing this woman's like secrets. But he's like, no, no, I don't want to do it like that. That would feel cheap. So I was like, hey, look. I like he's a he's a decent enough not really a started off as a villain type of guy so I like that sound a lot I like a lot of what it represents and it might be a future Jojo tattoo to go along with the Jojo tattoos that I have on my body uh-huh. so um that was that for that round uh let's go into the next one what is your favorite part of Jojo and why ah uh, see we already kind of kind of spoiled it mm-hmm. but pretty sure part five <laughs> is my favorite part um part six mm-hmm. and seven are very 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 close though um mm-hmm, mm-hmm. it's just like the second half of jojo's i'll call it starts to resonate mm-hmm. with me a lot more just in the character design and how everything starts to play out not that i didn't like the first half it's just like mm-hmm. it goes from a 9.5 to a, like a 10 so that's how i think about it but uh part five i don't know if it's just because it's like maybe the peak of my like jojo's consumption because i was watching it as it came out and i read all of it because i couldn't contain myself but i think Mm. it's just like something about the the like the group itself and also just the way everything starts to change a little bit drastically like they get a little bit more flamboyant. The fashion starts to get a little bit more out there. So do the stands and everything. And mm-hmm. like the setting is just really, really beautiful. And then the art in the manga, especially like the covers. I think I had at one point every like new like cover for like a, a chapter or volume like saved on like my phone or something just because it was just really pretty to look at. <laughs> mm-hmm. I don't know, it's just like everything about part five is just like, man. I'm definitely gonna try to watch it again soon when I because when I'm, I'm rewatching like all of JoJo's with a friend right now, and I, I mm. literally cannot wait for that part. So, hmm. I'd say um, my favorite part, like again, asterisk to part seven because it's just I think it's really good. I think it's so good that they could have just stopped there. Yeah. I would have been fine. It would have been it would have been enough thing to even stop. Yeah. But Araki just got to keep pumping out more JoJo's. Um, so I'd say um, aside if I were to bar part seven. I would say my favorite part it's actually again part four I really like how self-contained it is I really like Josuke as a character in this part like no one really like each like you can like sort of tell like um and what's really fun about Jojo is that like you can tell each character's personality and what they would do in a situation and it's like really telling to like have the different situations that happened in part four with it being so self-contained within like just this little neighborhood of like here's this random event that's happening here's how um josuke would react to this situation as opposed to what jotaro would do in this situation and maybe why josuke is better equipped for winning this battle even though jotaro's stand is one of the most broken stands in the whole thing but josuke would still lose well jotaro would still lose so i like this the hijinks that happens in it i like the twin peaks kind of feel of that part yeah. i also love the villain in this part it's just i think I think this is the part where i think iraqi kind of got into his groove for the for the series yeah definitely I thought, wait what so, happened to part six i like part six a lot but like i don't know like i think i really i'm my bias is showing i really love part six just because jolene's such a badass oh, yeah and i was like for i sure. saw her design i saw like stuff for her i was like i have to get here i don't care if i have to slog through part five yeah, yeah. i have to get to part six to see what happens there yeah, part six but, is um i think a weird one 
Mm, like if I were to consider the whole package, I think part four is a pretty good part. Okay. But not all parts are created equal. Just because you like a part doesn't mean that that part has your favorite JoJo. So, who is your favorite JoJo in all of JoJo's right now? I said Jordan earlier, but honestly, it might just be Jolene. And I think it is Jolene. If you, if anyone like, if you know me, you know that Jolene is like a quintessential character that I would like. She's a woman who just like beats the shit out of people pretty much, which is just what I enjoy. Mm. <laughs> and then she's just literally mm. just cool. I also really love Hermes, but we're talking about JoJo's, but um, she she's literally just, she's super cool. <laughs> it's like, you get to see what mm. uh, uh, a JoJo who's a woman would be like, and it, it's what you expected. And she's just really cool. Um, I have, you know, her butterfly tattoo. I kind of have that just in my own way. Oh, um, it doesn't look like hers entirely like, mm. color wise, but it's the same like premise, just a butterfly sitting on a knife. I have that in like the same spot. Dang. So I guess she Dang. is my, I was considering Jojo. getting that. So now that you've done that, I won't do that. I'll just go ahead and workshop my Rohan Keisha Bay heaven's door tattoo. Yeah, That'd yeah. be pretty sick. If I get that one going, sure. Sorry, but I yeah, um, you. Yeah, no, no, it's a race. It's an arms race for tattoos between me and you, and you're, like, you know, bottom of the ninth, and you're way ahead. You <laughs> have a blowout lead there. Um, for me, and my favorite JoJo, I think my favorite JoJo is, I'm gonna say it's gonna be Joseph. He He's a, he's a bit of a, a, a crabby old man in the later parts. Uh, he shows up in um, part four, as well as showing up in part three, but I really love him in part two. It's just his bubbly personality. He's the polar opposite of his grandfather. He's, like, he will lie and trick his way out of a situation he's completely not chivalrous but um he'll just like i don't know he's the real american american jojo yeah. he's, he's all about like i don't know i just love his personality i love like his um like he did this he does this thing in the his he's part where he like British. predicts he, oh, he, he embodies america though he embodies american pride <laughs> um like he does this thing in this part where um, he'll predict what the villain will say, and I think that was a joke on, like, how in the manga version of it, like, if you read it the wrong way, the, what the villain will say will appear before he, like, introduces his stuff in his panel. So, like, it was kind of, like, in uh, the way I interpret it, at least, like, he, like, would peek and see, like, oh, yeah, the villain will say this, so he'll say, like, next you'll say this, and the villain will be like, oh, no, I wouldn't say this. Like, he'll approach every situation, like, um, I guess star would in, like, a Marvel thing where he'll just, he'll come out, guns, he'll just come out blasting just doing whatever he'll lie he'll make up like um he'll like totally bluff his way out through his entire part which he does yeah. so i really like his personality in that he one introduced, he introduces the uh what's what do they call it the secret joe star family technique yes the secret technique and i think all anime characters should uh take note of this uh the secret technique of running away yeah. sometimes you're in over your head and the best thing you could do is to just run yeah <laughs> He's also so, um, um, the JoJo that is, if my calculations are correct, he is also around the longest. I'm pretty sure. I think so. Because uh, mm. he's still alive mm. in part five, mm. um, which is kind of crazy <laughs> mm. at that point. He's in the most parts, I think. So mm -mm. he has the most saying power, definitely. Yeah. Um. So uh, the next thing I wanted to ask you, since we've kind of like. Uh, front loaded a lot of JoJo's information to people who would be listening to this and maybe wouldn't know anything about it for the first time. Yeah. Um, where would you kind of recommend fans getting started with either reading it or watching it? Where would you kind of recommend people sort of getting started? And please don't tell me you're a part skipper because From it's the beginning, my one gripe bro, out of all JoJo fans. <laughs> like, if you skip parts, you're weird. What's wrong with you? <laughs> uh, yeah, no, I'd literally just start at part, part one. Um, where the whether or not you want to read or watch it uh, doesn't really matter. They both have their benefits, their downsides. Um, but like, like if you don't start at part one, you're just you're doing it wrong. I'm not gonna lie to you. <laughs> you gotta do your due diligence. It's yeah. like a history lesson. You can't just start learning things now. You gotta know about what happened during the first wall and the second wall, so you don't repeat the things in the other walls. That'll hopefully never happen. Like you gotta look at it from the perspective of like people who might have been reading this from its inception back in like mm. the 90s or whatever like they didn't they didn't they didn't skip parts and i'm sure the journey of seeing a new family member like probably means even more to them than it does like someone like me who got into it when it was all kind of already out because it mm. would be like 
like imagine you're just like you like like imagine you live in Japan, right? You see the new issue of Shonen Jump, and it's like new JoJo's. You see a completely new character you've never seen before, and, and you see stands. You don't know what that is, bro. That would be crazy. I feel like that's kind of just like you just have to do it like that, man. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. That's why I hope there's another part because I want to experience that. <laughs> Mm -mm. I need to see how many more like current music references because I think like he's gotten to the point of like referencing Lady Gaga in like part eight or something like that. So he's he's getting pretty current with stuff. Um, So uh, is there anything that I didn't mention or didn't ask you about JoJo's that you'd think would be worth mentioning to someone who might be curious to start their own bizarre adventure into the series? Um, I don't know. I have no idea. I mean, I know you didn't ask me my favorite Joe bro. Oh, well, uh, who's your favorite Joe bro? I mean, I don't know, cause like there's a lot of good Joe Joe Bros, but like I said earlier, like I think the latter parts are like what really has me like all for it, um, mm. and just like it's just all of the Joe 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 Bros from Part Five, to be honest, but specifically, mm. um. Specifically, Bruno. Bruno might just be my favorite jo- JoJo's character. The main character of part five, I'd argue. Yeah, kind of. Dual mm. main characters. But <laughs> uh, Bruno. But also, like, Armies is really good. As well mm. as um, Foo Fighters. And then um, Gyro, of course, who is arguably the main character of part seven, too. But whatever. Mm. But yeah, that little. I'd agree with you there. That little bundle of people is like can't go wrong with them no disrespect to speedwagon he was he was the the first the original joe bro, joe the original bro. Joe bro. Yeah. <laughs> all right so uh this will be the part where i open it up to you uh feel free to plug any projects any social media that you have uh let people know where they can find you on the interwebs um well if you want to find me specifically for anime stuff i guess you could go to instagram follow me at tensai.sama um, I don't really post anymore, but there's a big backlog of writing I've done about anime. Um, I actually had a list of favorite JoJo stands on there for a while, but it's it's not on there anymore. So uh, that's a bit of a blue ball. But mm. um, Tensai spelled T-E-N-S-A-I-I dot Sama, uh, S-A-M-A. But if you want to see like actual serious stuff that I do... Uh, you can follow me also on Instagram at tlw.ii for uh, photography. Um, I, I think about two years ago, I started, didn't finish a project like doing JoJo's inspires portraits of people. Um, looking back on it now, kind of sucks, but it's a very important part of my art journey, I will say, which is another reason why I really love JoJo's. It's an infinite source of inspiration that I don't really necessarily use anymore, but just thought I'd throw that in there. So if you want to see some pictures, right. go there. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I would say uh, that is another fear quelled. And now you guys know more than zero about JoJo's to be continued in the next episode of the FOMO podcast. See you later. Yare, yare da wa.